Good morning, everyone. Welcome back. And um, may I be, may I personally welcome you to uh, day two of Soccer X. What a wonderful day we had yesterday and a wonderful morning so far. And happy to see all of you here. Uh, my name is Ben Grossman, and uh, very happy to be back myself here in Manchester and at Soccer X. And before we do get started with this session, I would just like to personally take a moment, if I would. Uh, yesterday at the opening ceremony, uh, I heard my friend David Dean talk so beautifully uh, about Duncan and, and his loss. And we've heard wonderfully from people around the world. And I would just like to personally add from across the pond in our region um, how much Duncan will be missed, what an incredible impact he had around the world and in our region. People know Soccer X so well in the States and in, in Mexico and Barbados and places we've been like that in our region. And for people constantly flying over here to be part of Soccer X and Soccer X coming there, uh, it's just important everybody knows from our side of the world how much Duncan uh, was just a, a force of nature and will be missed. So thank you for uh, allowing me to take the time to honor his memory. I appreciate it. Um, and now we're going to talk about um, the region we just spoke about, Conca Catholic. I'm so happy you could join us this morning. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Ben. It's a pleasure being here. Good morning, everybody. And before we get started, we uh, would love to show a little video of, it, of what's been going on uh, back home in our region at CONCACAF. If we could roll that, please, Larry. That was beautiful. Seeing the Americans win the Gold Cup, our version of the Euros, absolutely fantastic summer. Um, but thank you for that. You saw a bunch of the great competitions that we have in our region at CONCACAF. Um, and speaking of CONCACAF, why don't we start there? Um, it's a strange word, a bunch of letters. Uh, what does it mean? What is CONCACAF? And what is it about? Thanks, Ben. I thought you'd, you'd like ending with uh, the US winning our Gold Cup. And yes, uh, CONCACAF just rolls off the tongue. <laughs> um, so, so CONCACAF is one of the six confederations of FIFA uh, administering football in the North American, Central American, and Caribbean region. We represent 41 member associations uh, in that region, and we run premier competitions like the Gold Cup and the other three competitions that you saw in that video, which included a club competition, which is our Champions League, a new competition below that, uh, which is called the CONCACAF League, and then a lot of uh, sub or, or youth tournaments 
uh, along with futsal and beach soccer and other denominations of, of the sport. Um, in terms of, of, of our focus, um, really is thinking about, our mission really is developing the sport and creating uh, much more participation in the sport across, uh, across the entire region. Uh, and for that, we have a lot of development programs. Uh, we've had um, a new administration in place now for a little bit over, over a year. Victor Montagliani, as our president, has really put a very strong strategy in place of, of a one conquer cup, really uniting the entire region uh, under, under one mandate, which is really to elevate the power of a sport across the entire region. Nice. So uh, you mentioned a lot there, which is great, gives us a lot of things to talk about. You talked about all the different competitions. Uh, in our region and around the world. You talked about uh, the changes at CONCACAF in the last year. We'll talk about that and then what some of the initiatives are. So let's start with the competitions and we'll kind of start with one of the newsier ones and that is the uh, World Cup bid process for 2026. Um, right now, if you haven't heard, the, the bidding is going on. Uh, there are two different bids that have been formally filed. One is the CONCACAF region and the other is Morocco. Um, just so that everybody understands, what exactly is your and CONCACAF's role in the bid for 2026 from that region? So CONCACAF is playing a supporting role, uh, bringing, helping uh, our three member associations, US, Canada, and Mexico, come together uh, in putting together this bid. It's the first time that three countries come together uh, to, to potentially host a, a World Cup. This would be on their World Cup for 48 teams uh, for 2026. And we really believe that it's, it's, it's our time. It's, it's a time for the, for the World Cup to come back uh, to the CONCACAF region. The last time it was played there was in 1994 when it was played in, in the US. So if you think about 2026, 32 years will have to go by until the World Cup comes back uh, to the CONCACAF uh, region. In the meantime, three World Cups will have been played in Europe two in Asia, one in Africa, uh, and, and uh, one in South America. So really it is our time. Uh, it's an expanded World Cup, and we think it's, it's really a great opportunity uh, for the region to, to think about where football will be in 2026 and what we need to do uh, as a region in developing the sport as part of winning that bid. You mentioned 1994. Uh, I was lucky enough and old enough to have worked for the World Cup in 1994. And the US put on a, uh, a very well-received tournament, which actually launched our professional league, Major League Soccer, two years later in 1996. Given that the US seems to have the infrastructure, has proven they've had the interest and the ability to run a World Cup, why does this bid then include Canada and Mexico? It's a great opportunity to, for three countries uh, to put the best foot forward. Each of them could host a World Cup on their own. Absolutely. Uh, that's the reality. But I think in them coming together, it really represents what CONCACAF is about, the unifying power of the sport. Um, together, we think that we can put a better overall bid. Uh, we can create uh, a really strong, diversifying fan base across these three regions that represent uh, all, of, all of CONCACAF. So I think when you put all those, all those elements together, and you think about the infrastructure that, is, that exists um, in these three countries, uh, it really is a great opportunity to have a fantastic World Cup in 2026. The, um, the plan as of now uh, is to put, um, I believe it's an 80 game, 80 match tournament, 60 of them in the States, 10 in Mexico, 10 in Canada. It seems like that's uh, something that would uh, work quite well. Um, that's three nations then that would be hosts. Traditionally, the host nation is, of course, uh, granted a spot in the World Cup. Are you hopeful, and will that be the case, that all three nations then would be granted uh, spots into the World Cup? Yeah, I think with the expanded uh, World Cup, uh, CONCACAF will have six and a half uh, slots. It would be natural for the three of them to have an automatic spot into the World Cup. Uh, and I think that's, that's pretty natural that it happens that way. When it comes to how the matches will be will be um, put across the three of them. That will be decided. Right now, it really is about uh, putting, putting the best bid possible uh, and really showcasing what can be done across these three countries uh, with this bid and, and, and not only meeting, but really exceeding FIFA's requirements uh, when it comes to the bid process. Good, and it's a natural. There's so much 
besides CONCACAF, obviously, uniting the entire region, uh, Major League Soccer has three franchises in Canada right now, in Toronto, Montreal, and Vancouver. Very successful franchises, a huge addition to our league. And uh, Major League Soccer and American Soccer work so closely with the Mexican Football Federation. Different competitions, new ones being contemplated as well. Hopefully news on that coming down the road. So it seems really natural to bring it together. Um, a couple other questions about that. Did the Morocco bid surprise you? There was kind of thoughts that the, um, the CONCACAF bid may go uh, unrivaled. I think when you think about the magnitude of the World Cup and you think about what it can represent for a country, uh, it's not surprising that there will be other participants going into the bid. Uh, independent of that, I think you know, these three countries are really working very well together in putting, in putting a very strong bid and, 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 and ensuring that uh, when this is reviewed, that the question is asked, why not Mexico, U.S., and Canada coming together for, for hosting this World Cup? There was an American gentleman up here on stage yesterday by the name of Charlie Stilitano, who has worked in football for a long time. He said that uh, the U.S. is basically, the CONCACAF bid is basically a shoe in to get it uh, unless our president does something ridiculous. Uh, I assume he was not talking about uh, Victor Montagliani, the president of CONCACAF, or, or Sunil Gulati, the president of U.S. soccer. He was talking about Donald Trump. Um, has the new regime in America affected that at all? Has it affected how you guys go about your business? It hasn't. Uh, the reality is the administration has been very supportive uh, about this bid. Uh, this is a World Cup that will take place nine years from now. And because of the unifying power of a sport, we think that any administration will really get behind what it can do for, for the country. Uh, so we don't see that as, a, as an issue. And, and right now it's really just about getting the bid forward. Okay. Last question is about qualifying. It's a timely one. Um, right now, the CONCACAF region is in the last few matches of qualifying. Um, Mexico and Costa Rica uh, look like they're in good shape to grab two of the three automatic bids. Uh, the U.S., Honduras, and Panama are fighting for the third automatic bid. The fourth team goes into a playoff with a team from Asia. It's getting a little dodgy for my Americans. We'll see what happens. Uh, big match tonight at 1030. Um, so uh, that being the case... Right now, it's an incredible competition. Six, team, six teams go into the final pool for qualifying. Uh, three and a half of those make it through. With the new format, though, the expanded World Cup format to 48 teams, you said six, there are six guaranteed bids. Um, does that eliminate, are you worried that that eliminates the excitement around qualifying, something that's being asked in other regions as well? I don't think it eliminates the excitement. I think, by definition, the format will need to change. Okay. I think one of the things that we look at um, in our region is we have a long four-year cycle of World Cup qualifying, but most of our member associations are eliminated early on, right? So you mentioned we, we have the, the hexagonal, the six teams competing for three and a half spots. Uh, that means that the rest, th uh, 29 countries, are left sitting idle to that, to that their entire process. So it's actually interesting to, to, to be in this window right now being here in Europe and seeing that there's 54 nations from UEFA participating for a potential World Cup slot, whereas we only have six. So we're looking at that as a potential way to increase development, uh, having more national team competition. And I think when you think about, about an expanded World Cup with more, with more slots, we just need to think about a format that adapts, ad adapts to that and creates a very relevant competition. So with the US struggling to get in this year. Is there any chance we can expand the format for this one? No? Okay. Didn't know how powerful you were if we could pull that off. We may need all the help we can get. Um, Good luck tonight. Yeah, we're going to need it. Um, so wanted to talk about uh, the competitions, the other competitions that CONCACAF puts on. We saw the Gold Cup final, our version of the Euros, if you will, um, except it happens every two years, not every four years. And then most recently, uh, I guess it was two years ago in 2016 it would have been, we had uh, what was called Copa America Centenario, which was a wonderful tournament held in the U.S. that uh, put together CONMEBOL, the South American Confederation, with CONCACAF and brought some of the great world powers, Argentina, Brazil, Chile, to the U.S. for a combined tournament. So I want to talk a little bit about the CONCACAF schedule on its four-year cycle, what that looks like now and what it could like, look like down the road. So the Gold Cup to begin with, can you talk a little bit about that and what the plans are for the CONCACAF championship? Absolutely. So uh, the Gold Cup is our premier national team competition. Uh, we just finished uh, in, in late July, and we had a fantastic uh, turnout 
uh, all, all around, including attendance over close to half a million people um, uh, attending the games, fantastic final in Santa Clara between the US and Jamaica, uh, great uh, audiences and, and viewership uh, across Fox Sports and Univision in the US and across the region with other broadcast partners. Uh, we had a record sponsorship participation. We had 11 partners coming on board and really activating heavily around the games and, and around our competition. So it is our premier competition. It's also really the, the engine of development for our region. That's, that's where CONCACAF uh, earns most of its revenue to invest in the rest of development. Uh, the other competitions are really focused on youth development, focused on, on how do we think about the right development platforms from a technical uh, perspective. Uh, so, so, so Gold Cup is the engine of growth for us. Uh, we're looking at a potential expansion of, of Gold Cup this year. We had 12 teams participating. We're looking to potentially increase it to 16 teams. And it's biannual uh, because it is a great, fantastic tournament for the region uh, and great experience. And through it, we, each, each, cycle, each uh, competition gives you half a spot for potential Confederations uh, Cups. So if it's a different winner between each of the two different years, then they would play uh, a, a playoff in order to determine who goes to the, to, to the Confederation. Looking forward, the, the tournament will continue. As I mentioned, we're looking at potentially expanding to, uh, to allow more teams from our region to participate. Uh, that is always a, a very strong development opportunity for the nations that, that, that get to come in. We saw great experiences from Curaçao and French Guyana, who were the uh, two teams that hadn't participated before. Mm -hmm. And when they have an opportunity to participate in Gold Cup, uh, it really helps the development programs uh, at the local level. And then you mentioned Copa America. Uh, Copa America Centenario was a, a 100 year celebration of Copa America, which is the CONMEBOL uh, national team competition. It was held in the US, 10 nations from, from the CONMEBOL uh, territory, six from our confederation participating in what turned out to be a fantastic football celebration in the US, uh, a great success across the board for everybody. Uh, and, and really establish a very strong relationship with Comebol to think about other ways we can collaborate, potentially replicate Copa America uh, in the future. Uh, so we're looking at a lot of different opportunities in terms of growing our, our, our competition. So I don't want to put you on the spot, but I'm going to put you on the spot. Uh, will there be another Copa America Centenario then? Do you, do you envision that being a part of the regular four-year calendar? We have an active dialogue with Comebol about exploring the opportunity to, to create uh, a combined uh, Copa America, uh, continuing with what we, we started in 2016. Uh, we'd love to see it set in the calendar, but still early stages in terms of the conversations and how it would slot in. Uh, right now our focus is a Gold Cup in 2019 and 2021, uh, so we'd figure out how, we need to figure out how a, a future Copa America would look like within that calendar. Okay, and you mentioned the Gold Cup produces the CONCACAF region's entrant into the Confederations Cup. Uh, Mexico went uh, and represented uh, CONCACAF this past time in Russia. Do you think there's going to be a Confederations Cup leading into Qatar? There's been talk that there may not be. I think I'll let FIFA answer that. Okay. Um, but uh, there is, I think the question is, should a Confederations Cup uh, continue? I think um, we were having a conversation earlier about what it does do in terms of, of the ramp up to the World Cup in preparation for, for not only the teams, but also for, for all the partners that, that, that are gonna work around the World Cup from a broadcasting and, and, and sponsorship perspective. So it serves a very strong purpose uh, in that sense. Um, but the question is out there, should the Confederations Cup continue uh, into the future? Okay, and, and last quick question. There's been a change to the friendlies around the world. Uh, UEFA Nations League has kind of changed perhaps uh, and has domino effects to our region. What does that mean for friendlies and the calendar for national teams in CONCACAF? So looking carefully at, at what UEFA has implemented with their Nations League and their, and their Euro qualifiers, um, they have really maximized the calendar from, a, from in terms of FIFA available dates. And it's great because it offers all their members a lot of competition at the national team level. Um, what that has done also is taken friendlies away. I think there was a, there's a, a view that friendlies weren't necessarily uh, helping so much from a development perspective. Um, if we look at our, our, our confederation, Many of our members are not even playing friendlies. Uh, they don't have the resources because friendlies do not generate right. the revenue necessary to, to, to be competing. So as we look at that, at that model, we say, 
we need to figure out how we can increase competition at the national team level, uh, taking advantage of the FIFA available dates, and thinking about uh, creating relevant programs for, for, uh, for our members to sell. What I mean by that is, you know, a lot of these nations, once they're out of World Cup qualifying, they're sitting idle for two to three years without necessarily the ability to go to the market and, and sell a product and say, sell a, 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 the dream of potentially getting to the World Cup, even as far-fetched as, uh, as that may be. So for us, it's how do we look at what UEFA has done and could we implement something similar um, in our confederation, increasing competition for all, creating more relevant competition, and giving our members the opportunity to, to have a relevant product. I want to shift and talk about some of the issues that we're um, facing and CONCACAF is, so, is championing so well in our region uh, that touch things on and off the pitch. Um, one of them, of course, is uh, inclusion, using football as a means for inclusion and uh, keeping, stamping out racism on and off the pitch. Um, it's, an, it's an important topic everywhere, but it's, it's, it flares up in our region as well. Uh, there's a certain chant that happens in our region on goal kicks when a goalkeeper kicks the ball. Um, certain fans have started to, uh, to shout a word that has a uh, potentially a homophobic connotation, depending on, on who you ask. And it's something that's become a, um, a good way for football to kind of rally around. And uh, it's something we've dealt with in Major League Soccer. And Larry, if we could roll that quick YouTube clip, I'd like to show everybody uh, something that we've done in, in Minnesota at our club to talk to our fans about this. Something we've done in Minnesota was sent around, around Major League Soccer. It's a sport that's really rallied around that cause. And at CONCACAF, you guys have taken it to the next level in a fantastic way. Um, we've seen the implementation of a new um, program called State of Goal. Uh, maybe we'll look at the video first, and then you can talk a little bit about that. Larry, could we roll that wonderful video, please? So congratulations on a fantastic initiative, first of all, as this chant kind of started to gain prominence and gain media attention uh, around our region. Um, many people led by CONCACAF have stepped up to really strongly push back against it. Tell me about what you've done and how important that is to CONCACAF. So uh, indeed, the, the chant is something that um, is unacceptable, it's offensive, and we represent such a diverse region uh, and our sport unifies it. So we wanted to be very proactive uh, with our campaign and, and really start elevating uh, the, the, the issues around, around stadium safety, the issues around uh, making people uncomfortable or feeling unsafe in, in, in our stadiums. So we created this campaign because our sport has a very unique quality. Uh, the acceleration that happens when people live a goal it's almost hard to compare it in any other sport. Uh, when, when a goal happens, you embrace whoever's next to you, you're high-fiving, uh, you, you, you may not know who they are, but 
that's independent of race, independent of color, independent of sexual orientation. So our message was let's elevate ourselves beyond that and live in a state of goal on an ongoing basis. Uh, and, and, and with that really is thinking about then we can't eradicate this chant or, or uh, behavior we don't want to see in our stadiums on ourselves. We really need to engage with stakeholders that uh, can help us in that process and want to embrace what we're doing. So as part of our campaign during Gold Cup, we worked with our stadium partners, we worked with, sta with our broadcast partners in sending this message in, in, in trying to communicate to our entire fan base that this chant is offensive because people that are, are, that are maybe singing this may not even realize that it's offensive. And I think it's not something that, we're gonna, that, that we cured at Gold Cup and it's not something that's going to that's gonna era be eradicated, but I think as more and more people come on and start understanding the offensiveness uh, of this chant and can help then think about the stadium atmosphere that we all want to create, the stadium where you want to bring your family and your kids to, uh, that's what we're working for. Fantastic. Congratulations and thank you for that. It's really been, thank you, it's really been wonderful. Um, so you've been on the job since, about, you said a little over a year, if memory right. serves. Um, you've come in as part of the new CONCACAF regime. Um, CONCACAF went through some much publicized uh, issues that we don't need to revisit here. But do tell us, what is the new CONCACAF like? What are your initiatives? How is it putting all of that in the past and trying to move forward? So over the past two years, CONCACAF has gone through a very strong reform process. Uh, it started uh, in mid-2015. We had external counsel and consultants um, really helping us through the reform uh, process and putting in place uh, new statutes that create more transparency, more accountability, and, much, and, and, and better corporate governance uh, across the entire structure of, uh, of CONCACAF. Uh, Victor Montagliani, our president, came, came, uh, was elected in May of 2016, uh, and beyond all the reform process that he's helped put in place, it's also putting in place an administration organization uh, that is focused on football first, that is focused on the development of the sport, and is, and is really focused on service. Uh, and, and he ran the campaign that, that, that leadership is about service and not about power, and maybe that wasn't the case that CONCACAF was, was being led before. Uh, and, and through that vision, uh, putting in place our, our one CONCACAF strategy on how, how we can uh, develop the sport and how we continue with the reform process to ensure that this confederation is indeed focused on football and is taking, uh, is taking the best opportunity possible to take this amazing sport to the next level across the entire region. It was alluded to on stage yesterday that there was a feeling that there, the U.S. government, which has, has gotten into football, um, may not be done looking into it. Uh, are you confident that that's in the past and now we're ready to just move forward? Absolutely. Uh, CONCACAF was declared a victim in that process uh, by the Department uh, of Justice. And we work very closely with the Department of Justice in, in terms of um, make, making sure that we are indeed continuing with the reform process, uh, that we're putting in place the right structures internally from a control procedures perspective. Uh, we have a chief legal and compliance officer um, that, that, is, that is essentially running all our processes and ensuring that from a compliance perspective uh, we're continuing to evolve, that we're on par with FIFA and, and, and also uh, have FIFA's um, uh, vote of confidence in, in the direction uh, we're headed. So we feel very comfortable in the direction we're going. We're, we're, we're very proud of the progress we've made to date um, and we'll continue down that path. So we've talked about the competitions, um, helping the smaller nations, if you will, grow their football on and off the pitch. Uh, what other initiatives, what other things, what other plans do you and the new CONCACAF have going forward that you really want to be uh, judged on and be proud of? So first, we want to make sure that uh, in supporting our three members, we obtain the World Cup coming back to, <coughs> to CONCACAF. Uh, we're also looking at implementing more development programs and growing our overall business so we can invest uh, more in development. And uh, also implementing changes to our competition structure to ensure that, that uh, we're targeting youth at the right level and creating the right youth development uh, programs overall. And um, we recently uh, started our new Champions League uh, format, which is 
improving the club competition level within CONCACAF. It's not only increasing the Champions League uh, competition from 24 to 31 teams, but really staging it at the right levels and even beyond the, the two uh, level of competition, focusing on how we can increase, increase club competition across the Caribbean. And uh, in closing, I understand there's some work being done around the CONCACAF brand. What do you want the CONCACAF brand to mean going forward? I think what we want to represent is that we are a very diverse region, that we're unified, uh, that we're focusing on football first, and that we're focusing on, on, on really uh, garnering the power of our sport to, to develop it and create more balanced competition across the system. Fantastic. Well, Philippe, you and, and Victor have been such a, a welcome breath of fresh air, uh, brought such a, a fantastic new frontier for CONCACAF. It's been a pleasure uh, dealing with you and so many good things to look forward to. Thank you for your time today and thank you for all your work. Thank you, man. Appreciate you being here and thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone.